Well, hello again. Thanks for stopping by. My name's Dr. Jim, and I've been on a rant a little bit about sundowning. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you know that sometimes I just keep going on about certain topics, you know, gut health and human trafficking and the opioid crisis and other things like that. Go off the beaten trail a little bit. I'm a gerontologist, but I am fascinated by many, many topics out there. One that is in the wheelhouse of gerontology and senior care is sundowning. And what I'd like to talk about today is managing sundowning symptoms, because that is the key to good quality care, good quality of life. Residents in senior care communities diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related disorders are at risk of sundowning in the late afternoon and the early evening hours. Sundowning symptoms can be very stressful for both residents and caregivers and may include increased mood swings, paranoia, hallucinations, delusions, increased confusion, disorientation, agitation, combativeness, wandering, and elopement, just to name a few, believe me. The importance of appropriate and effective interventions to help manage symptoms and improve the quality of life of residents who sundown cannot be emphasized enough. Managing symptoms is critical. A good start is to rule out other potential health problems or disorders that may not be related to sundowning at all. They might mimic sundowning, but there could be underlying physiological problems. Medical interventions may also involve a thorough physical examination, as well as a consultation from either a psychologist to perform an evaluation or a psychiatrist to perform a psychiatric evaluation, as well as review all the psychiatric drugs that person might be on. Can it be the medications? Can it be the meds? Are they the culprits? Reviewing the resident's medication is an important step in managing symptoms and it's very important because some of the most commonly prescribed medications in senior care can cause the symptoms that are associated with sundowning. Important questions regarding medications include the following. What kinds of medications are administered to the resident? What time of day or night are they given? Can a dosage be changed or titrated? What side effects of the medications are being observed by the clinical staff? Some drug-induced side effects of medications include a condition called akathisia, which is difficulty staying still. Another one is tardive dyskinesia, which causes unusual movements, mainly of the mouth and the limbs, sometimes the eyes. Other side effects include muscle rigidity, orthostatic hypotension, and anticholinergic toxicity, which involves tachycardia, constipation, and confusion. How can caregivers help? There's no medication for sundowning. There's no magic wand. It's all about person-centered caregiving. While there are no meds specifically prescribed for sundowning, some medications might help, um, including antidepressants, some very mild antipsychotics, but you know they're gonna come with side effects, so you have to monitor them. Before any medication is ever ordered, non-pharmacological intervention should be the first line in helping residents who sundown. Now, let's look at some very common basic things that you could do. The importance of light, light, believe it or not, okay? A good place to start is examining the environment in which symptoms regularly occur. Adequate lighting is important and may reduce the possibility of shadows, which might be misinterpreted as hallucinations. Some experts believe that light therapy might be helpful for those who experience sundowning. 
it's the most studied and it is the most used clinical practice for many health conditions, including dementia and depression. It's believed that by increasing the amount of light in the evening hours, this can help the individual to reorient themselves and reduce symptoms of sundowning. Noise. Is the environment too noisy? What about practical caregiving tips? The caregiver is the most important source of help in managing symptoms and improving quality of life. Caregivers can start by getting enough rest themselves so that they can better handle sundowning situations. It can also provide meaningful activities, high quality personal care during the earlier part of the day, keep those residents nice and engaged and active and busy. And these can keep residents engaged throughout the day so that they might have more rest in the evening. Caregivers should also be observant and take notes on the who, what, where, why, and when involved in sundowning episodes. You have to be a detective. Look for patterns that might emerge. Look for triggers that might lead to sundowning. Well, I'm out of time. I actually ran out of time a minute or two ago, but I wanted to give you as much information in a short period of time as I possibly can. My name's Dr. Jim Collins. Please continue to learn about managing sundowning syndrome. I'll see you soon.